Oh, this is sweet. Holy cow, we are getting hooked up. No kidding. Look at all this gear. <laughs> the sheep feet, I'm excited for these. Absolutely. Heck yeah. Most important thing that I'm gonna need on this trip. <sighs> God. That's cool, jeez. Where do you begin? <laughs> it's better than Christmas. Holy cow, this is awesome. They got some here. Yeah, we'll find us a big bowl of this. Oh, nice. Nice. Holy smokes. Look at this thing. That is, that is gorgeous. Yeah, I'm excited. This is awesome here. Too excited. This is going to be a week to remember right now. I've been looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to it for a really long time, so. Those are nice classes. <laughs> Meeting those other guys. Look like yeah. you got great competition, great, great competition. guys. Yeah. Man, Good. you got your work cut out for us for sure. So that's right. We will prevail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's real now. Here we go. Yeah. All we gotta do is start packing out some elk. What's your names? I'm Brent McGurr. I'm Quinn Klein. How are you guys feeling? You excited for this deal or what? Absolutely. <laughs> Dream come true on this hunt. I just, the fact that we got selected, it blows my mind. It was a lucky deal. We were kind of one of the, like as soon as we saw the booth, we were like, we're gonna go on that show. That is freaking awesome. We wanna be a part of that. <laughs> Where are you guys from? Go ahead, you can answer first. Uh, originally from Idaho. Uh, I did some time in the army and ended up here in Colorado. And I'm from Colorado, born and raised. Guided in some other states here and there, but always kind of lived here. What do you guys do? Uh, we both operate a natural gas plant. And then uh, obviously we run a small production company and film our own hunts. You, you've recently actually gotten gotten some stuff done with Full Draw, right? Yeah. Why you take that one? Yeah, we, uh, we had a big project with the Full Draw film tour that was really close to us. And it became way more than a hunting film. Uh, probably one of the most special projects we'll ever do uh, and it was we're lucky enough to be uh, in the 2020 full draw film tour how did you guys hear about hunt wars uh, we were actually in uh, we, we do the total archery challenge every year and we did the one here in Colorado this this last year and uh, we just kind of I think we just swung into chit chat or something like that to kind of figure out what, what it was all about and they're giving away free hats if you hit something that's you gotta what it stop. Was. so so we swung by you know just checking it out like like we normally do walking around the vendors and we started talking and as soon as they explained what hunt wars was all about me and Quinn looked at each other and it was like yeah we'll, we'll do whatever entries or applications or fees or whatever it takes to to apply for it we're doing it so I think we uh, we went back to the room that evening and jumped on our phones and applied that same day. So it was one of those things too, where when we learned about it, 
we were with a group of people and instantly like me and Brent knew that that's something we wanted to do, but we didn't want to hype it up because we didn't want a bunch of our buddies entering. So when we got to the top of the mountain, I was like, hey, dude, we need to enter that tonight. <laughs> Don't tell them, but we need to enter that tonight. What do you like about the element of competition in this? I'm a competitive person. I always have been. I competitive, or I competed collegiately in rodeo and my whole life in sports. Uh, me and Brent, all of our friends, whether it's cornhole or wrestling, it's got to be, you got to win. So competition's always been a part of my blood and it drives me to be better whether I win or lose. Uh, so I love it. Well, if you think about it too, you're competing against elk every year. Yeah. Regardless of what the other team does, it's an elk, it's you versus the elk. Yeah. And whatever the other team does, it's kind of out of our hands. Um, and it's really out of their hands too. It's a, it's a you versus the elk. How did you decide who would shoot? I'll take this one. That was a hard one. It was, yeah. it was hard at first, but not really like in all honesty, because so when we did the full draw, of course, just like every hunt that you're trying to film, it's when you're sitting in the, the restaurant having a beer talking about it, everyone's like, yeah, we'll film for you, no problem. I'll take the month off. And then it came down to brass tacks and I didn't have anyone to film. So Brent had an over-the-counter tag. The unit I was hunting was a different unit. Um, I asked him if he'd be willing to film for me and I told him I'd try to as best I could make it worthwhile. And he's like, yeah, just let me know how many days. And I said, could be up to 20 days and so he filmed for me for 14 of the 17 days something like that That we were up there so when it came time to pick it was like yeah um, not only do I owe this to Brent I feel like he's it's you know his turn for me to pay him back for that debt that that he uh, distributed to me so generously the year before all right guys well thank you very much and uh, good luck on the hunt thank you appreciate yeah, it, man. Wait for it man we'll see you here in a little bit looking forward to it so I'm Ken Fleury and uh, I'm 38 years old and uh, have a concrete business with not this brother but my other brother and uh, I've got three little kids uh, my oldest is 10 and my daughter is eight and my youngest is six Ryan Fleury uh, 41 yes yeah, similar story um, I have my own concrete business not part of these guys's I have my own and um, you know, we were both uh, very fortunate to be, uh, grew up in a hunting family. Um, my dad got it started young. It's just us and our, our oldest brother. And we all three of us love to get out together. Ken and I, all our kids are basically following suit. Two boys and a girl for me also, and they're all best friends. And so we end up getting out and doing a lot of stuff together, get out and do a lot of elk hunting. A lot of a lot of hunting in general yeah and we try to always get the kids involved as much as possible when we met Troy at Big Sky you know we're packing around a whole tribe of kids and uh, figured we'd sign up and lo and behold here we are middle of September and we get to chase bugling bulls in New Mexico so couldn't be any more excited everybody on the hunt horse crew has just been awesome to deal with so absolutely yeah excited just to try to make the show um, something special hopefully we can come through and put something on the ground what was it like when you pulled up was it kind of surreal or absolutely yeah. it's kind of it's it's odd because you know we're we're a do-it-yourself family i mean we've never been in, on a guided hunt at all how did you guys pick your shooter just talk about that we haven't yet i i, I tend to forget about that one so um <laughs> <laughs> well it started it off because we got we got the phone call for the uh that they want to do a second inter interview for us and just in our minds going well that might be a good sign so it's like we talked about it beforehand if if we were to get picked how we'd go about doing it we said well a shoot off probably only seems fair and so when we got the uh got the uh second interview it was like maybe i'll just bring my bow over to ryan's just in case yeah ken brought the bow over um we did the celebratory, celebratory um, deal with the family and ate some dinner and we said, you know what, let's go find out who's going to be the shooter. So tried to make things as simple as possible. We had the target set up at 70 yards and we just said one arrow, one shot, closest to the dead center of the 12 ring wins. So all of a sudden, a little bit of nerves, everybody's been in a shoot off probably before, all of a sudden it means a little bit more. But, uh, so there might've been one or two letdowns. Um, 
and uh, I shot, and it was a very good shot. Um, I think I hit the bottom left corner of the 10 ring, so there was about an inch and a half to be probably perfect at 70 yards, so obviously now I know where he shot, and I know it's a really good shot because he's got his Illuminoc there glowing there at 70 yards, and I can tell it's at the bottom of the bullseye, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> and he's, he's already starting to rub it in and <laughs> as I'm trying to shoot. I let my arrow go, and it felt, felt good. Sure enough, I was just a fuzz high. He got me by about a half an inch, so. Anything else you want to say? Thank the fan, the wife and kids for letting you come. Yeah, as, as, as always. As, um, our wives are fantastic. They're the reason we get to come out here and do all this stuff. You know, when, when the unveiling came about and we were gonna be on Hunt Wars, I personally think my wife won't admit it, but I think she was more excited than I was. So, <laughs> and that's, I was pretty excited. So, um, that being said, yeah, as soon as we step out the door and we leave for a trip, especially going to some place that we don't have service, yeah, that's a lot of burden on them, you know. Yeah, we, we use the line at my house all the time, hey, you married me. You knew what you were getting that's into. Right. That's so, right. So, first and foremost, that, you know, we take care of family and very close second, it's hunting season and it's archery season. It's September, so we're elk hunting. That's the way it's gonna be. Just get over the top. Let's go. sound like they're freaking dropping down hard, aren't they? Because yeah. they were up here. I like him. At some point they're going to stage and we'll get in the middle of them, but there we go. Okay, so this cowboy is up here, right here. We're not actually in that bad of a spot now. He's, he's not that bad. We'll separate ourselves, just give us that 100 yard barrier. I'll keep hiking, let's keep hiking.
spot where that ball comes out on that ridge. I'll be able to shoot to that ridge if he doesn't want to cross that again yet. But at the same time, if he's coming in again, I gotta be able to get a lane somehow.
because the first thing that Ken's doing is counting arrows. So, story time. That close. Yeah. But we were so close to him. Yeah. I couldn't figure out what the hell he's doing. I didn't know if he was hanging out next to his cows and just doing his thing. Did you have visual on him? No, nothing. But he sounded so close. We're having to move so freaking slow. And then every now and then, he'd get guttural. And you're like, okay, we, we can move a little bit more. No, you go. Yeah, he was just, he was right below that knob yeah. in the, in the bottom there. God, we got all the way up there. And he is so close, except it's so thick. And I'm like, where the heck is he? Because he is just ripping it. And finally I catch the shadows moving and he's right there. And so I take a step over and I can see his butt. And I couldn't range him through all the crap, but I could range beside him, you know, and it was 70 yards up above him, so he's between 60 and 70. Yeah. That was the last time we heard a bugle. He was standing right there. Did you, did you get a look at him? No. No. Besides his ass. It's a beautiful ass. <laughs> Big. <laughs> I'm running over every scenario as we were stuck in that bowl. And, you know, we've already talked about these bulls are already call shy here, which Ken and I, we come from hunting very, very call shy elk. Um, just a ton of people, some good, some really good bulls, but, you know, people are hammering with calls and yeah, they're, they're call shy, but I don't even know how many bulls I've called in for myself and for other people 
timing is everything and obviously I lost on this one um, but I, I'm not I even call shy elk I think there's always a time where you can hit the right moment that guy I felt like we were in the right moment I just think that we our timing was a little bit off because I think he knew something was a little bit wrong I just felt like once we knew he wasn't standing there we moved into position and I and I ended up bugling I didn't feel like a cow call in my mind a cow call wasn't the right time or place and what I feel like is cows cows are usually pretty talkative kind of chatty if he was actually calling in cows in my mind or if I wanted to cow call him in I would have been cow talking to him the whole way down there. Catch 22, we're giving away our position the entire way down there, so obviously that's not why we did it. And But if I sneak all the way into his bedroom like that, we're 60 yards away from the bowl, and all of a sudden I throw out the first cow call that he's heard, I think he's gonna go red flag right there. Bulls on my, on the other hand, they come in silent all the time, and you know, I, I raked a tree, see if that'll that perform. Um, and then that's why I threw out the bugle. So that was my thought process. We're just gonna give him credit and be in a big bowl. We don't know how big he is, but uh, we're sure he's good size. Ryan's going to sit out a water hole this afternoon where we got into several bulls this morning. And, uh, so we're going to go check out a different little area here and uh, check out there's a spring over here, see if it's got water and see what the elk sign is over here and maybe stay for the evening and see if we can't uh, scare up a few bugles and have another game plan in case the other spot falls through. Cow, cow, cow. Sucker for fives, especially ones upstairs like that. Jeez. 
is right there. That looks really good, too. Yeah, a gorgeous guy. Bold, not bold. Yeah. Yeah. Either we blow them, blow them out and hope for the best or Thank you. 